So are we live everywhere? Yeah. Not only here. Amazing. Well, welcome. And welcome everybody. I'm in Helsinki. I was in Iceland just yesterday. Yeah. They're in a shop show. We don't call it Tantra anymore. <laughs> it scares the shit out of everyone. At the end of all my workshops now, because it's the shaft show and people think it's tantra. And I always say, it wasn't an orgy, was it? And it wasn't. They don't get freaked out anymore, it's brilliant. So <laughs> the best thing to do nowadays is just keep the tantra word out of it. <laughs> too, too many, uh, the brain goes to orgasms or something juicy. This is juicy, but in a different way. So we're live over here, and we're live over here. Is it looking great? <laughs> is this fantastic? Is this a dream come true? <laughs> Has anyone seen uh, the Netflix cartoon series, Midnight Gospel? No, no. It's really good. And he has these roaming drones around him, and that's been my dream, and now it's actually come real. <laughs> I love my life. I love my body. I love myself. <laughs> So, holy shift with Shah Uddin. This, who made this? Igor. Igor. No. You made this? Of course. This, this made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got this when I was uh, in the STI clinic in, uh, in Iceland, making sure I have a, you know, a shiny penis. <laughs> and uh, I got this through and I was very happy. Happy indeed. Sexual health, please get yourself checked out, you know, at least once or twice a year, depending how active you are in the festival season. Just, you know, just putting it out there. So, welcome to the Shaft Show. Holy Shift is a beautiful new edition. Igor, thank you for creating a beautiful thing. Our very own Guru Mai. Is it Kai or Kuli? Kuli. If you say Kuli, it means Kuli. penis. <laughs> <laughs> if you say Kuli, it means fantasy fish. But if you want to. Kuli. So we're both known as penises? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shaft and Kuli. Uh, Kuli. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> the biggest dicks in town. This is brilliant. If you want more secrets, cook means in a Swedish cock too. So I'm double. <laughs> double <laughs> dick. I'm double face. In Finnish and in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Babes, this is. Destiny! Yeah, yeah, Dick yeah. destiny yeah. together! <laughs> <laughs> so yes, massive gratitude for the people of Helsinki and my, my pimps and my managers and everyone. And um, Sten? Sten? St Stone. Stone. On the live stream. It's all happening. So we're going to have a little check-in to see how everyone is. Um, if you don't want to say your name, you don't have to. Uh, but if you do want to say your name and how you're feeling, we're going to say our name and one word and how we're feeling right now. So shout. Chill. Michael. Cool. Peaceful. Nico, I'm used. Reino, excited. Kylie. Excited. Coolly. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Minna. I'm feeling bubbly. Ranski. I'm feeling uh, sort of excited and sort of effervescing warmth from my cheeks. <laughs> we like that sensation. Kian. Enjoy. Oh. Enjoy. He's so handsome. Enjoy. Very excited. Keep relaxed. Stella, Justine. Igor, excited. And somehow very energized. Brilliant. Come over here, Igor. You curated tonight. <sighs> Give a little description of your intentions. Mm, this is a li little taster for the uh, Tantra Festival that's happening, right? Yeah. Um, 
first of all, you do it to uh, get everything up and running. I'm the canary or the guinea pig, so uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're welcome to try it out. But also, it is an invitation for all those of you who haven't decided yet whether to jump in for our weekend. We're preparing all the technical parts. We're getting ready this whole scene for us to have an amazing weekend. I can't wait. Lots of fun, lots of beautiful, amazing teachers with us and beautiful people who will have this juicy weekend. A lot of um, dancing, we have love lounge, we have super beautiful bodywork exercises. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. And it's our debut to have a festival in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really excited. I'm so grateful to Kuli uh, for hosting us here. It's incredible ashram right in the middle of, of Helsinki and we feel so loved. It's like uh, being with our family again. It really is. Estonia Tantra Festival is amazing. I was just at Wild Love which is the Iceland Tantra Festival and now I'm here. Life is incredible. So I'm looking forward to that workshop what you have for us for tonight i wish you good luck well, thank you very much you're doing great thanks bro <laughs> have fun cheers. we're all gonna have fun yes. cheers so tonight is all about how to shift our perception around sensuality sexuality and become more present and in a space of reverence and devotion when it comes to sexual energy. Now, let me give you a little definition of sexual energy. Who here has seen uh, the film adaptation of Mulan on Disney? It's incredible. I highly recommend anyone to watch the film adaptation of Mulan. There's literally a quote in there, I can't remember, I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, if you lie or don't speak your truth, you block your chi. And they talk about chi all the time. Um, I've studied in the Shaolin temples and they talk about chi all the time. And this chi, this life force energy, is spoken about in Star Wars as well. The Force. Anyone seen Star Wars? Not once. Back in 1977? Uh, yeah. Best one. Uh, no, 97. So in Tantra, there is a word called sexual energy. It's the same stuff. The deeper I go into this journey around beliefs, around technologies used for liberation and freedom from social conditioning, I found that it's all the same, but in different packages. And that energy, that um, awakening process, we use three simple tools to liberate ourselves from ourselves. And they are breath, sound, and movement. Now there are many, many different types of yoga. There are many, many different types of meditations. And there are many, many different types of tantra. And there is a common thread throughout. So I wasn't always a tantric sex guru, or a sacred sexual Jedi, or an enlightened master. By the way, we're all enlightened masters. It's just so juicy to be in our problems so often that we forget. That's why I have this to remind me. There is something that the shamans, the healers, the tantric practitioners, and all the vipassanas and plant medicines and breath works are unlocking inside of you. Do you know what that thing is? They're basically selling the same product. There's 10 points riding on this. You can collect these 10 points at the Tantra Festival if you come tomorrow. So for 10 points, what is the common thread that runs throughout all of these awakening processes? Life force, energy. 
One more. Love. We get five points. <laughs> Anyone else? Sexual energy. I'm actually a bit deaf. Sexual energy. Hmm, close, close. You get five points because it's self-love. The hardest part of the spiritual path. It's easy for us to awaken our sexual energy once you have the right tools and the right teachers and the right community. It's easy, easy for us to channel that chi and literally get superpowers. But the maintenance is the self-love aspect. That's the hardest part. With my work, I condensed everything down to three simple parts. And this is my free gift to everybody, the world. I love religions. Every religion has the mystical aspect to it. So my middle name is Islam. So I'm very much ingrained in some kind of belief. My parents are strict about Muslims. But they never told me about the magic of Sufism. Who has heard of Rumi? Mm -hmm. He's like the most beautiful poet and speaks about love. He's a mystic. And he was a Muslim. And that aspect was Sufism. In Hinduism, there is a magic aspect, the esoteric part, which is Tantra. In Tibetan Buddhism, there is an esoteric practice, which is Tantra. Uh, in Judaism, there is the esoteric practice of it, which is the Kabbalah. So there's magic in everything. In Christianity, I believe it's the Knights of the Round Table. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. But I know there's magic in that part of the, the mystic elements. And in every religion, they use the same technologies. So my mum... She's always got these beats, 108 of them, and she's going, Allahu, 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 every day. I have no idea what she's doing, because I rejected religion. And then I had my mental breakdown, and I found Tantra. And they worship a, a beautiful hot god, he's super sexy, called Shiva, he looks a little bit like this, he's got a top knot, he's pretty ripped, and he wears animal prints. You'll love him. And I used to pray to him, and I still do. Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Shiva. And because of him, I have my business, sacredsexualawakening.com. Check it out, it's my job to be that guy, that God. Then I found out about Lakshmi Ma. Om Shri Mahalakshmi Enamaha, Om Shri Mahalakshmi Enamaha, Om Shri Mahalakshmi Enamaha. And in 19, uh, 2015, I retired. I'm in retirement, by the way. I just do this stuff because I'm bored. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> and then I discovered, like I broke down Tantra to its uh, most simplest forms. And I learned that the key components in my life were three things. I love my life, I love my body, and I love myself. So now I say, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself. And guess what? I actually love my life now. I actually love my body. Like, I'm actually doing okay with these. Like, my body's great. I used to be sick all the time. I'm not sick anymore. I even had COVID Tantra, Swedish Tantra Festival. I, I was there during the scandal when it all kicked off. I'm in the national newspaper for uh, the, the scandal in Engsbacka. It's brilliant. And the hardest part of the mantra is, I love myself. So what does this mean? I'm going to expand and unpack this simple mantra that I've used to change my life. I love my life means to love your life, love your purpose, and love what you do every day. So when you find something that you love, you never have to work another day in your life. We're free. Like, this is amazing. This is like, I'm retired, but this is me in retirement. Having the best time. I'm 172 years old, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love my body. This means to love your body every day. 
Learn to unlock its infinite potential. And every single one of you is multi-orgasmic. Every single one of you has a unique chemistry set. But it's up to you to figure out how to unlock the right chemicals to make you feel good. To release testosterone as a man by giving yourself testicle massages for eight minutes a day for six months and then you'll become more masculine. For women to give yourself breast massages for 10 minutes a day with coconut oil whilst listening to power ballads, that's actually what I do with my clients. And then you release more oxytocin. Doing different things to activate parts of your brain so you no longer be depressed or understand that through human connection, you no longer are addicted to scrolling or drugs or drink or smoking. All of this is available. It's up to us to figure it out. And this is why I chose Tantra as it's kind of a, a handbook on how to use these bodies. And these bodies are amazing. And the final part, I love myself. This means to find inner peace every day and know that you are enough. We've all got the uh, part of our being that is constantly searching. I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when, when I get a six pack. But then I gotta get more veins in my six pack. I'll be happy, I'll be when, when I get a million views on YouTube. But my other friends have got 10 million views. I'll be happy when, when I become, uh, when I buy a house. But then I need to become mortgage free. I'll be happy when, when I get a girlfriend and then all my problems will be gone. That's when they begin! So, <laughs> so we're constantly looking outside of ourselves, chasing this thing. But if we understand why we're programmed that way, we could chill out a bit more. I've realised that I'm constantly climbing mountains, these peaks of perfection, to become the most amazing yoni masseuse, or the best tantra teacher in the world, or the best graphic designer in the world, or the best art director in the world, or the best whatever, and then I crash and burn. What I've realised is, we're hardwired to do that for evolution and to literally reach the stars. Like, we will leave this planet because we want something more all the time. It's hardwired in every single one of us, but we need to understand that it's okay to have that. And once you've achieved something, Chill out on top of that big mountain you just climbed. More than 10 minutes. <laughs> Chill out and get some rest. Don't burn out on top of that mountain. Wait for the next mission to come. And when you see that mountain, the next one, prepare yourself and take your life to the next level. And that's what Holy Shift is all about. We're going to take our life to the next level. And tonight, we're gonna go deeper into this little mantra. So we're gonna do a little meditation to activate ourselves. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go deeper into becoming present through connecting to ourselves and each other. So we're gonna do that by activating our and understanding energy. So we're going to close our eyes and take a deep breath into our hearts and exhale the sound. Ah. And take a deep breath into our bellies and exhale the sound. Ah. Ah. Take a deep breath into our sex and exhale with sound. <sighs> so a lot of you have already breathed like, like this before. But the people at home, I want to direct you into this way of breathing. You want to breathe and expand and inhale as much as you can and then let out the sound whilst feeling the vibration in your heart, in your belly, and your pelvic bowl. So we're all gonna do this together, people at home. 
and we're going to do this as well. And the louder the sound is, the more it tickles your heart and tickles your belly and it tickles your sex. And we like the tickling sensations, right? But if you have enough of them, you'll have an orgasm. So <laughs> we're going to take a deep breath in and let out some sound into the heart. Yeah. It's like extending the orgasm. It's not just a little sneeze anymore. Into the belly now. And a big breath into your pelvic bowl. from when you did it first time round to the second time round. If you did say, oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's the power of presence, which has slowed things down. Eckhart Tolle, who's read um, The Power of Now? He describes, like I described that book, Tantra for Dummies. It's literally the whole of the tantric practices, but repackaged and given in a very simple way. And he describes the gaps between the thoughts. Like our brains are constantly thinking. They will never stop until you pass on to the next life, and it still will never stop. Our breath will never stop until we pass into the next life. Like, our bodies are constantly doing something. The brain constantly thinks. This co constantly breathes and our heart constantly pumps blood through our body. But there is ways to control everything. Through meditation, and it doesn't matter what form, you can start to extend the gaps between your thoughts. And that's really nice. I chose Tantra to do that. But I didn't do it because of that. I did it because of the orgasms. I was always jealous of women. And I used to identify myself as a lesbian blessed in a unicorn's body. I was raised by my mum. I've got mum tattooed on my back. I'm very much in my feminine energy. I am very comfortable in my feminine energy. And I always wanted to be a woman because you guys have all these multi-orgasmic experiences and the best thing in life was for me back then was ejaculation because I thought that was the peak experience so that's why I was always seeking sex. And sex for me was a relationship or finding peace in that human connection. And when I discovered the amazing healing arts of Tantra, I learned to extend my orgasm and extended it and extended it and extended it until I became orgasmic. And that's the same with my thoughts now. I could spend hours meditating and extend the gaps between my thoughts and then I disappear, which is super nice. And I learned that through vaginas. But that's another workshop and we're gonna talk about that at the Tantra Festival. But here I want you to feel love. Here I want you to feel sensations in your body and I want you to uh, feel just a little bit lighter at the end of this workshop. We're not going to do too much, we just want to chill out for a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is feel love in our own hearts and feel that mantra activated in our being. 
it's all on, it's all great saying I love my life, I love my body, I love myself, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself. Um, but if you don't feel it, you can't truly feel it. So what we want to do is really feel it. Um, I'm just going to conduct a little experiment with it. So energy. Energy is great. And I'm going to get everyone to feel energy right now. So everybody, look at your little finger. Look at your little finger like there's nothing else in the world apart from your little finger. Bring your awareness, your consciousness, your intention, your presence to your little finger and breathe into it. Now, does your little finger feel more alive now than it did a second ago? If it does, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. Now that's energy, that's awareness. That's your consciousness going to your little finger. Now what we want to do is bring our awareness to our hearts. So we bring this tingly feeling, this aliveness into our hearts. So closing our eyes and visualizing this energy going down your arms, and into the middle of your chest. Slowing down your awareness so you could almost feel your heart beating. I could feel mine. Can you feel yours if you can? Say, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've got some, I've got some, that's fine. <laughs> so that's where we want to be today in our heart space. The more awareness we bring to our hearts, the more loving sensations we can create, the more loving sensations we feel in our hearts, the happier we become, and the more in love with ourselves we become, and happiness boosts your immune system. And a better immune system means a better body, better life, better self. And that's where we want to be. So, we're going to do a standing activating meditation. And I'm going to change the music. So what we want to do is activate our body. We're going to round ourselves. And we're going to do a bit of shaking. And then we're going to find a partner and do this, do this very powerful meditation. So let's do the, uh, the activation first. We're going to have the support of Jean-Paul. Shoulders, relaxing your jaw, relaxing your ass, relaxing your belly, and letting out some sound. Ah. <laughs> really shaking it up, exaggerating that shape. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the sexy shoulders popping out. So we're shaking, shaking. Let out some more sound. And now, we're going to ride the unicorn. You ready?
exaggerating the shake. And then just shaking that ass. Shake that thing, come on. Activating your company energy. And we're gonna ride that unicorn. Ready? into your body and we want to get out of our heads into our beautiful sexy bodies and just feel the sensations that's flowing through us a big breath in a big breath into the heart and exhale sound ah. big belly breath in and exhale sound Ah. And one delicious breath into your sex and exhale with sound. Ah. Ah. And now bring all of your awareness to that big, beautiful, beating heart of yours. Now we want to open up the heart a little bit more. And the way we're going to do that is collect connecting with our heart. So slowly flicker your eyes open. <clears throat> and we're all going to come into a circle, so come closer. into our hearts and we're going to make the sound
So you squeeze tight in front of you and let go. Coming back to your energy. Placing your own hand on your heart and on your belly. Tune into your heart space, find a partner and find a space. <clears throat> if you don't have a partner, you can join a free or raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, you can do it with me. <laughs> okay, so. Find some space, let's uh, get you on the edges of the mat. This is a very active meditation. And what we're going to do is, we're going to tap into our inner child. Remember when you were a kid and you had all of that energy, and you didn't know what to do with it. Uh, we're going to tap into that and we're going to celebrate our lives because you all made it this far. So you're going to celebrate and you're going to be in competition with the other. And what that means is if one person is celebrating how awesome they are, yes, then the other person has to out celebrate me. Yeah! <laughs> and then I'm going to go, Wah! and then you go, Wah! so we are. Helping each other celebrate how awesome we are. Healthy form of competition. And then we're going to do the powerful mantra. I love my life. I love my life. I love my body. I love my body. I love myself. I love myself. So that's what we're going to do. On the count of three, you're going to let go of your inner critic, your inner judge. <laughs> You're going to liberate yourself and tap into that carefree child inside of you that's still open to play. So one, two, three. Yeah! yeah!
But let's have a little sharing. How is everybody doing? Is there anything that's alive in you right now? Just do popcorn style, just seeing if there's any sensations flowing through you, any emotions. Being alive. It's a good feeling, right? <laughs> I'm joyful and so good to hear heart bumping stronger. Mm. <laughs> a voice. <clears throat> open. Voice open. Gratitude. My whole body is a cellular orgasm. <laughs> we have a winner! Holy <laughs> shit! We have a winner! We haven't even started the workshop yet! <laughs> is it just an intro? <laughs> it's just an intro. Thank you. 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 So, what is the time? Because my time's in this device. Time is there. Eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. cr oh, great. We're two Eight miles, miles, right? Yeah. yeah. So, any questions before we dive deeper into the practices? Okay. So, my line of work is helping amazing, courageous, powerful women release sexual trauma from their bodies. I've been working in the field of female empowerment for seven years now. From the islands where I live, they call me Dr. Shah. I'm a specialist in women's vaginas. I don't think I've met any women or even lesbians who've seen or worked with as many women in the world of awakening than myself. Like when I get into something, I get really good at it. And through the vagina, the great universe itself, where we all came from, I found peace, presence, and my life purpose. And my purpose in life is to give people permission to be themselves. I'm so free and liberated that just through being in my company, it allows you to chill the fuck out, not take life too seriously, and then you become enlightened. It's amazing. I mean, you just have to look at all the people in uh, Reykjavik, where I've been for the last six weeks. Everyone's life's changed. Everyone's gone to the next level just by hanging out with me. It's because I'm fearless. Now, two months ago, no, August the 2nd, I wasn't like this. <clears throat> I had social anxiety. I was a fucking mess. I couldn't talk to anyone. And I was petrified. And I was in fear. I would look at a beautiful, lovely lady and not be able to speak to her, even though I was a tantric sex guru and a yoni masseuse and a relationship therapist. That's my job. That's easy. Normal life is hard, and I'm still a human outside of that role. And that role's easy, because someone's paying me money to be present, and I'm just literally reading the script or pressing a few buttons and making people cry. That, it's a job. Life is hard, on the other hand. Outside of this space, no one's giving me permission to talk. Like, I, I'm still a scared little boy. But something's shifted in me. This guy here, the guy that does the Yoni Masuse, the guy that's Shiva and present and powerful, is in real life now. And I found this freedom through worshipping women, through helping women overcome their sexual traumas by giving Yoni massages. And what I used to do, and still do, is a very simple method. And it all boils down to touch, conscious touch. And through touch, I'm able to heal myself and others. I don't have any superhuman abilities. We've all got the superhuman abilities. 
And that's to just calm our nervous system, come into a space of presence, breathe into our hearts, feel love in our own hearts, channel it through your body, remember the finger exercise. The extension of your heart is your hands. Anyone seen Iron Man? He's, he, he shoots laser beams out of his hands. We could do that with love. And it's based on science. It's called mirror neurons. I mean, we all know this because if you meet someone who's stressed and anxious and like really angry and you sit next to them, you can feel their energy, their emotions. Just through osmosis, you'll pick up their stress, their anger, and their anxiety. It's just how humans adapt to their environment. If you're in a stressful environment full of stressful people and you're fully enlightened and you get put into that environment, you're just slowly going to become less enlightened and you become stressed and just become like a normal human being. But if you're stressed and you're going batshit crazy and you hate your life, you hate your body and you hate yourself and you're in a group of enlightened masters and people and you put that person in there, just through osmosis, they will change. It's inevitable. Like, it's impossible not to change. Because their pinhole perception of reality will just open up and go, huh, there's another way. If that person could do it, then I could do it. And I always say, surround yourself with better versions of yourself. There's a great meme on the internet, I can't remember who says it, but uh, if you are suffering, if you're diagnosing yourself with depression, anxiety, and stress, just make sure you're not surrounded by arseholes. And that was like, huh, okay, the opposite of that is surround yourself with better versions of yourself. So my next mission in life is I, I want to learn how to sing. So now I'm attracting people who sing. Super nice. I want to become a tantric millionaire. I'm not going to become that person if I'm hanging around with poor hippies. I will have to hang around with tantric millionaires. In the last week, I've met Sorel Amor. In Iceland, she's like an influencer. Bruce Lyon, he's a ta literally a tantric millionaire. Who was the other one? You know, <laughs> it is someone else, I can't remember. But there are influential people who are gravitating around me because I've decided to make a choice. So if there's something that you want in your life, just decide to get to the next level of your existence. And then somehow, by magic, the right people come into your life and they help you and support you. It's possible. But if you believe that everyone's out to get you and everyone's out to fuck you up and everyone wants to drag you down, then that also is real. Belief, whatever you believe in comes true. Good or bad. So through worshipping the Yoni, which is the oldest Sanskrit word for Volvo, where we all came from, I learned presence. I was able to <clears throat> get shaft out of the way and just channel Shiva, the divine masculine energy of pure presence. And I was able to let go of my depression. I've been depressed since 1988. I was able to let go of my addictions, and I've been an addict since 1993. I can't get life insurance, ever, because of my medical history. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I overcame my severe loneliness, which I've had since 2004. All through practicing conscious touch, which allowed me to become present, and then I used conscious touch as the foundation for my healing practice with yoni massage, yoni de-armoring, yoni mapping and all the different types of packages that I give to powerful women. And in one year and eight months of studying Tantra, after a lifetime of struggle, I was able to let go of all of my suffering. And it's been a pretty interesting ride since. Life is amazing. Every day is a miracle. 
So we're going to begin by practicing conscious touch. We're going to begin by doing it on ourselves and then finding a partner and doing it on someone. So I invite you to sit comfortably. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you and demonstrate what conscious touch isn't and what conscious touch is. So here's my arm. And I'm going to touch it. And I'm going to show you the difference. And then I'll explain what's going on inside. So this is the first touch, and here's the second touch. What was the first? Hmm? What was the first? It was so quick, I didn't see. That's the point. <laughs> so, <laughs> we touch ourselves and other people like this. <laughs> Get it, extending the orgasm, extending the gaps between your brain and thoughts. What we want to do is get your arm out and everybody at home. Can you see if this is actually facing me? Yes, this is great. This is good. Cool. Amazing. So, what we want to do is touch ourselves normally. So, how would you touch yourself? Everyone touches the, themselves so uniquely, it's amazing. <laughs> so completely different. So what we're going to do is, so that's your normal level. We're going to turn it into a meditation. <clears throat> Remember that finger exercise? Bring all your awareness to your arm and to the tips of your fingertips. You want to be able to feel the tingling sensations on the tips of your fingertips and your arm. And then breathe into your arm. And then slowly place your fingers on your arm. Closing your eyes, bringing more of your intention and awareness to your fingertips and your arm, you're slowly going to bring a very slow, conscious stroke. So you can feel every hair follicle, every vein, every part of that arm of yours being stroked by your fingertips. And you want to go so slow that you go slower than going slow. So your normal level of slow, you want to go slower than that. And now bringing in more of your hand and your palm. And you can twist your arm and move your fingers and palm around like you're dancing around your arm. Just bringing your awareness, your intention to your arm to your fingers, the movements of your hands, dropping out of your head and into your body. And that is a conscious touch. to the side of your body or on your knees 
And now just tune into your arms and your fingertips. And just sensing the sensations in your body. So we'll take a deep breath into our heart and exhale the sound. <sighs> deep breath into our bellies and exhale the sound. <sighs> deep breath into our pelvic bowl and exhale the sound. Slowly flicker your eyes open. Is there anything anyone wishes to share from this very simple meditation? Other hand wants to bet. <laughs> Other hand wants to bet. My hand wants to bet. Good. That's homework for you. <laughs> Anyone else wish to share? Goosebumps all over. Oh. Goosebumps. Goosebumps all over. That's what we're looking for. Oh, thank you. Anyone else wish to share? Have you ever touched yourself like that before? Did anyone feel any new sensations in their body? So that is giving yourself conscious touch. The next exercise, we're going to go deeper into presence and connection, is to give and receive conscious. Who here would like to be my demonstration buddy? <laughs> Come on, babes, we love it. <laughs> so you can have a little lie down and chill out whilst I um, demonstrate. Can we see if this is seeing everything? Not everything, she's missing. <laughs> So, <clears throat> conscious touch. This is a beautiful little practice where you could play with your partner. And it's a self-love exercise. And the way we do this is the anal director of me wants to see what's going on behind that screen. <laughs> you smoke in advertising, I do apologise. It's amazing! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so... How do you feel when you say, I love you to someone? It feels good for me. Mm -hmm. So, by the act of saying, I love you, something gets ignited in your own body. So just by saying I love you to your friends or to your partner or to a dog or a cat, you're generating love in your own body. So that's a form of self-love. It's a self-love practice. You could use gratitude, you could fall in love every day with the tree, the breeze, the air, a smile, a cup of coffee, whatever it is, we just want to keep on turning that up inside your body. Now, in the tantric arts, what we want to do is feel love for our own self. Or if you have a partner, it's easier to just to give love. It's a lot easier to give love to your partner. Send it to them. In this exercise, we're going to give love to the partner. 
And if it's someone you don't know, you just have to turn up the volume of love within yourself. Just by the act of giving, you're receiving. She's basically reflecting my own love back to me, but I'm also channeling love into her through mirror neurons. So I'm gonna demonstrate and say what's happening inside of me whilst I do the practice. Now, one of the foundations in this line of work is having healthy boundaries. So check in with your partner to see what their boundaries are. What are your boundaries? I love that. <laughs> now that is probably one of the worst things you can say to a tantric ninja. <laughs> oh really? Perfect. Okay, where's the coconut oil? <sighs> Bring a friend, I'll do a double yogi massage, simultaneous yogi massage at the same time. It's actually my speciality. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, check out my... <laughs> SacredSexualAwakening.com is actually a package I give. Um, so when you're working with people, I always say it's like a very vanilla person meeting someone who's into hardcore BDSM, and they say, oh, I have no boundaries, go wild. <laughs> it's not going to really align. So it's better to have some boundaries okay. to start off Don't with. <laughs> There's no boundaries. So as a giver, I also have boundaries, so I don't have to do everything uh, the receiver says. That does hurt me. Don't hurt me. That's one of the things I say. Don't don't uh, leave any marks on my skin. Is what I say. So um. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's fully open. Uh. I'm not, because I have some boundaries. So I won't be touching your amazing boobies or your vagina. So that's uh, my boundaries. Remember, it's your body, your temple, your boundaries. So please say what parts you do want to touch and what parts you don't want to touch. Because someone might touch you anywhere and then you might regret it later going, I wish I said they, they shouldn't put any fingers up my bum hole, but I, I just froze. So that happens, guys. That happens. So please have some boundaries, and then you can work your way down from the boundaries. So we, we should do a boundaries workshop, but I believe that you're adults, and I believe that you trust your own body, and I believe that you respect your own boundaries. If you do, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I have no responsibility then. <laughs> okay, so. What are your boundaries? Don't leave. Don't leave? No. <laughs> What's your relationship with your father? Don't leave hearts and let's Okay, right. So in joke around tantra and daddy issues. Love it. Everything's daddy issues, just so you know. That's the bulk of my work. 95% of my work is daddy issues. Okay. So, don't leave any marks in skin. My, uh, my boundaries is I won't have your breasts or your vagina. And no uh, um, massage. No anal massage. <laughs> Check out my YouTube channel about my anal uh, the armoring story. So, <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm feeling the energy of the earth coming through my being and into my heart. From my crown chakra, I'm bringing in that Shiva presence, Mother Earth, Father Sky, bringing it into my heart, feeling that warm, fuzzy energy in my own heart, into the heart of my palm, the, the extension of my heart, rubbing them together, and breathing into my heart, so I'm generating more love, and this takes me like, 0 0.00 seconds, because I've done it so often. And then I ask for consent. Is it okay to touch your body? And this moment is a bit like that moment in Avatar, where they get jacked into the horse, and then they merge with their vehicle, the horse and the Avatar person. So your nervous system is connecting with their nervous system. 
And if you're coming from a place of presence, place of love, with a clean, energetic feel, which is not a, I want to touch your vagina, I want to grab your boobs energy, because women feel everything, I'm able to bring my presence to her body. In this exercise, I invite you to breathe with your mouth open. And just share a couple of breaths together. So in this exercise, touching with a conscious touch, to place your palms on this beautiful temple and just bringing your fingers trailing behind. So your hands are great but also your arms are great. And so now there's more skin to skin contact. And if you come to the festival this weekend, there's more body to body contact and that feels great. slow things down so she feels more and you feel more Deep breath into the heart and exhale in sound. And a deep breath into your belly and exhale in sound. Ah. And a deep breath into your pelvic bowl and exhale in sound. Every experience, there's always a sh moment to share about physical sensations or any emotions or any visuals. Any emotions to share? Any physical sensations? Mm, maybe it was too short, you know, because I need more time, so I Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I mean, that was three hours you just had. It's <laughs> <laughs> by like that, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Who doesn't want to have a partner raise their hands? If you're watching at home, make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you press that like and come tomorrow to the Finland Hanker Festival and also click the link below for the online courses for your country. So making a nest. clothes on exercise and just say where you don't want to be touched but also where you do want to be touched as well and also if you do want your amazing chest and genitals touched that's also also okay so you know your body your boundaries your temple your rules So, if you have, and I want everybody at home playing this game as well, if you've got a partner, grab them, get cosy, and one person is going to be giving, Shiva, Divine Masculine Essence, which is the giver, the other person is going to be the receiver, the person lying down, surrendering the divine feminine energy, which is the Shakti energy. And the Shakti energy, the feminine energy, that energy resides in all of us, is the person who's going to receive, and they're the one with all the power. To surrender, you need a lot of power, and that power comes from your boundaries. So express where you don't want to be touched and where you do want to be touched. If you've expressed your boundaries, say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're still, do you need a few more minutes to express your boundaries? <laughs> if you've all expressed your boundaries, raise up your hands. No boundaries? Have you expressed your boundaries? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Oh yeah. Is everyone feeling safe in their body? Say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, the person receiving and the person giving. Close your eyes. Both of you breathing with your mouth open. Making the sound of the ocean as you breathe. Taking a deep breath into your heart and exhale with sound. Ah. Taking a deep breath into your belly and exhaling with sound. 
taking a deep breath into your sex and exhaling with sound. The person giving. I invite you to visualize connecting to the core of the earth. Connecting and grounding yourself to that Shakti energy, Mother Earth. And bringing her energy from the middle of the earth up into you, into your root chakra, and into your heart. Bringing in that grounding energy of the earth. And then bringing in the energy of the sky, the cosmic essence of Shiva, into your crown. As above, so below. Merging Father Sky and Mother Earth together in a big, beautiful, beating heart of yours. Now we're going to tap into that feeling of love in our own hearts. This could be a feeling of gratefulness. We could bring in a memory that brings a smile to your face. Or you could just pour out devotional love to the person in front of you. And then rubbing your hands together. Generating heat between your hands and slowly bringing them apart. And you should feel Something like maybe a balloon between your hands, or just heat energy, or two powerful beams pushing against each other and they're like turning into a big ball of energy. And you're going to ask for consent, is it okay to touch your body, and you're going to wait for a yes. And then placing one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. And you're holding and connecting with your nervous system to the other person's nervous system. Breathing together three times. your intuition using your intuition to move your hands around the body seeing this as a form of meditation. And the person receiving, allow your nervous system to relax, knowing that you are safe, that you are held, knowing that someone is taking care of you. that someone is here to give a loving touch, a conscious touch, and someone is giving you un-
unconditional love. Allowing yourself to really breathe into the sensations, turning up the volume of love in your own heart, allowing yourself to fully surrender. Tapping into presence, where we want to be is giving from a place of confidence. Remember, if it feels good for you, it feels good for them. But does it feel good when you're touching someone? Does the palm and your fingers and your arms feel nice when you're touching someone? Or are you a little bit shaky and you're not sure where or how to touch them? You want to drop more into your body and out of your head. Remember the mirror neuron. feels good for you, it feels good for them. If you're feeling shaky and unconfident, they will feel you feeling shaky. Feeling that presence. And for the last few moments, person receiving, you can express where you would like more healing, nurturing, loving touch. For the person giving can ask the question, is there anything you desire? Allowing yourself to get more yes from this situation. How can you create more pleasure? How can you direct someone without feeling guilty in receiving more expansion and liberation? So this is where we want to be, to express more of our desires rather than suppress our desires. And again, checking in with your boundaries, making sure you feel safe in your body so you can relax and open up that beautiful feeding heart of yours even more. If you're feeling good in your body, say, I love my life. And if you're feeling really good in your body, say, I love my body. And if you're feeling good in your soul, say, I love myself. Beautiful. Let us all unite with a big breath into the heart and exhale with sound. Ah. Taking a big breath into your belly and exhale with sound. Ah. Taking a big beautiful breath into your sex and exhale with sound. As you connect it so slowly and beautifully with your partner, you can slowly 
practice non-attachment and take your hands off your partner, bring them into a namaste and thanking one, of the, one another and you're going to have a few moments to share. Allow yourselves to connect. Sharing allows us to process and integrate an experience. festival happening. It starts tomorrow. I'm going to be providing a link below to everybody. So it's a beautiful online festival. Get connected with your friends and family. Get connected to your tribe. Bring in all of these technologies that we're doing and we're going to do a lot deeper during the next week, uh, this weekend. So get yourself a ticket. I'll be putting in all the links in the bio and we'll see you tomorrow. Keep on watching. Watch this to the end. We've got Q&A's coming up. Is there anybody in the comments? We got nobody in the comments. If you're out there, send me a question. We're going to do a Q&A after this. What is the time? your partner with a namaste or a hug and we're gonna switch Getting comfortable. Boundaries Checking in with the boundaries, making sure you feel comfortable as a giver and a receiver. And remember, the beautiful thing about boundaries is you can change them in a breath. So if you have a lot of boundaries and you feel more comfortable, 
and then you can let go of the boundaries. And if you have no boundaries and you don't feel comfortable, then you can add on boundaries. So remember, it's your universe, your pleasure, your body, your boundaries, your temple. It's your responsibility to take care of your own universe inside of you. If you agree on that, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That didn't sound convincing enough. Can I get an oh yeah? Oh yeah. 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 Okay, the giver and the receiver. Closing your eyes. Breathing with your mouth open, taking a deep breath into your heart and exhaling sound. Taking a breath into your belly and exhaling with sound. Deep, beautiful, big breath into your sex and exhaling the sound. <sighs> so as the giver, you're going to connect to the center of the earth. Visualizing your energy going down to the core of the earth and bringing in that Shakti energy from Mother Earth to support you and ground you. Bring it up to the heart and bringing in that cosmic energy from Father Sky, Shiva, the divine masculine energy, merging in the heart, expanding your heart, bringing in that loving sensation from a memory or feeling of gratitude or just devotional love to your partner. Rubbing your hands together, creating heat energy and slowly, slowly parting your hands and feeling that energy, or just heat energy between your hands. Or you can feel that chi energy we were talking about at the beginning of this, life force energy, sexual energy, whatever you want to call it. And asking for consent. Placing your hands onto this beautiful temple. Your nervous system connecting to their nervous system, sharing at least three breaths together. Weaving <sighs> with your mouth open. of the ocean as you breathe. I'm feeling all of the textures all of the body and sending love and gratitude and wishing them healing and bringing in a divine presence into the other person. skin contact, the more pleasurable it is. And if you want to 
bring in a bit of variation. Remember that touch you did to your own arm? We call that an air touch. So you could bring in more of that air touch. the question, is there anything you desire? And the receiver, how much more yes can you get from this situation? Check in with your partner if they want <laughs> slower, firmer, softer touches and to see if you're actually doing good so the receiver can actually give feedback. One hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. Taking a big breath into the heart and exhaling with down. Taking a big breath 
beautiful ritual with a little namaste and a sharing so give yourself some time to process and integrate and allow yourself to express yourself you've got a few moments to share So thanking your partner, and we're gonna come back into a, a circle. Share a little hug or high five or namaste, however you desire. Anything you would like to share? Yes, it's nice to give. Like there's so much relaxation in the giving. And I get to turn all this off and oh. <coughs> come into a space of meditation. And also give pleasure. Like by giving pleasure, I feel pleasure. So it's like a like a bonus round in every way possible. It's amazing. So coming into the space. <laughs> and is there anything anyone wishes to share? From their experience. Being the giver and the receiver. No. <laughs> in these busy cities where we're having to hit deadlines, get somewhere, another mission, another mission, it's nice to ah. 
Anyone else wish to share? Thank you, Charles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Later. Anyone else? Double thumbs up. <laughs> When you feel safe, when you are strong in your boundaries, when you've given consent, and consent is given and received from both sides, then you can fully relax. And there's a little voice inside of you that will, if something doesn't feel right, and it, it wants to say, oh, stop, let's not do that, you have to express it. And if you express it, then you just get better at having better boundaries. And when you I say no to that energy, then all these other things tap into your life. And this, through this little ritual of giving, of receiving, and stating boundaries, when you become a boundaries ninja, then you stop living in the world of people pleasing, and then you actually start to express your desires, and your wishes, and your intentions. And this is a really simple, basic practice, but the elements of this really can echo into every form of your existence. However you are in intimacy, however you are with yourself and other people in that vulnerable space, really does echo subconsciously and consciously into everyday life. So having strong boundaries, feeling safe, but also creating the environment where you create your own safety gives you permission to be yourself. And that's why we're here to be our true, authentic versions of ourselves. And that matters. So, I'm gonna close down my live stream and we're just gonna go into more of a relaxed cuddle space here. So everybody, watching the Shaft Show, holy shift with Shaft Din. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe and like and turn on the notifications because I'm always doing some kind of random live stream. So make sure you press that button. That is ding, 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 ding. And if you want to know more about self-love, connect to the links below. If you want to know more about the Tantra Festival, that's happening tomorrow. Get yourself a ticket. Uh, we're going to be putting the links below. And thank you. I love you. And I said to you. And everybody else here. We've got another.